I'm Arthel Neville. Time now for Sunday House Call. And I'm Eric Sean. Welcome. Joining us as always, Dr. Mark Siegel, professor of medicine at NYU's Lango Medical Center. He's also author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and Health. Also, Dr. David Samadhi, chairman and professor of urology at Lenox Hill Hospital and chief of robotic surgery. Good to see you both, Good doctors. to see you. Great doctors, to see you. As always, you know, turning up the volume on your TV screen or cranking up those headphones, well, you know, it all could lead to the troubling epidemic of hearing loss. Dr. Siegel sat down with a fellow physician who describes just how much damage we could be doing to our ears. Now, you can imagine a loud noise coming into the inner ear. That's like a tsunami coming in there, and that causes those hair cells to die. And if there's no hair cells, the nerve is no longer being stimulated, and you can't hear. So how big a problem is this, and how widespread? Dr. Siegel, you, know, you walk down the street, and you, hear, you can hear the music from someone well, else's can. headphones. It's so loud. That's a huge part of the problem. We're talking 40 million people are affected now. But with baby boomers, age-related hearing loss and hearing loss from those headphones and from medications that people take in diseases, we're looking at a much, much bigger problem going forward. Now, I want to explain why that is. He talked about the hair cells in the inner ear. Here's what this is about. I'm going to try to break this down. There's three parts to the ear, outer, middle, and inner. The eardrum is right there. You guys can see it. You all know about that eardrum because you've been hearing about it since you were little that eardrum. The inner ear is that snail thing that you can see there in the, in the, in the picture, in the demonstration, way on the inside of the ear. And, and it has inside of it, Eric, tiny, tiny hairs which vibrate. And they transmit to the brain hearing sounds. Now, they die with that tsunami coming in he's talking about, with that sound. They die from aging. They die from medication. And humans cannot regenerate them. Animals can. Humans can't. So what do we do? We use hearing aids, a $10 billion industry. Nobody's ever happy with the way their hearing aids work. Nobody. They don't like how they look. They don't like the stigma. They don't like that they can't separate the, the crowd noise from, from what you're saying and I'm saying. We have cochlear implants where we replace that snail that's in the inner ear. That no one's totally satisfied with. But now along is coming a new treatment, a genetic therapy, where they take a harmless virus. Novartis is working on this and they take a harmless virus and they put a gene on it and they inject it right into the inner ear and regrow the hair cells. It's worked in animals. It looks like it's going to work in humans. To answer your question five years, one other fi final point I want to make. Mm -hmm. The problem with that treatment is it washes out of your ear. You can't keep it for long. And critics say, fine, it'll work for two weeks, but then what? Another company, Autonomy, with an O, Autonomy has come up with a gel that will allow that treatment to stay in the ear. It's a simple Can injection. You do that right now? No, no, it's five years away. But five doctor, years before you're going to be able to go to your doctor and get it in, instead of a hearing aid. So if it's that far away, uh, Dr. Samadhi, and currently it's irreversible, is there a workaround? Is there a way to try to prevent it? Possibly? Well, that's a very good point. I think one of the main reasons for hearing loss is this noise-induced hearing loss. So you want to make sure that you keep the noise level below the 85 decibel. That's the number that you want to remember. 85 which is decibel. Yeah, but you don't walk around which with is, thing. I mean, so no, which but is, he can tell if, us If I can is. hear your music in the elevator, we have a huge problem. That's just too loud. I think we're getting older, so the wear and tear of those hair uh, uh, that we have, uh, hair cells, are important. And I also want to talk about something called uh, many ears disease. Many ears is someone that they, they always asked about this on Facebook. What is many ears disease? Hearing loss is part of the syndrome, but they would have also vertigo. They would have uh, sometimes nausea, vomiting, visual losses that goes along with it. Usually you see many ears syndrome within 50, uh, 40s and 50 year olds, but you can see it in children and it's uh, really devastating. It's the fluid that Mark just showed in the inner ear and the imbalance of that. Sometimes taking too much salt, maybe genetics, maybe some imbalance of that fluid for whatever reason can cause that. So there are some treatments. I think wearing earplugs if you're in a nightclub, making sure that you put an earplug. See your doctor. There are, there's, you should check a, a, your hearing a, every year and make sure that you're in the right uh, plan. And uh, stay away from the noise. That's really like the way to go because some of this damage to the, uh, these cells are permanent. Now, the genetic testing that is being done, I think we have a long way to go, and I'm not sure how it's going to pan out, but it's a good attempt. So what, what should we do? I mean, like, if you go someplace and it's too loud, we'll just walk out. Uh, no, I, if, I bring earphones. I bring I the earplugs, I mean. The yeah. earplugs. Yeah, the, that's the first thing is for people to be conscious of it. By the way, I want to make one comment about David's point about Meniere's disease. Eric, in that case, that treatment I talked about with that gel, 
might actually be available in one year, mm -hmm. one to two years, where they can take a steroid and inject it in there, and the gel will keep it in there. Might help Meniere's disease, might help recurrent infections. We got a lot of things happening. Well, the reason why this may work is because the gel that they're putting in, it's very thick. Because if you put something in the middle ear in order to stay there, uh, you have to not swallow for about 30 minutes, and it has to really keep it there in order for this steroid to work. So which is this what this company, Autonomy, is working on? We still have a long way to go, but the thing is we're living longer. You need your uh, hearing for yeah. many more years. This is obviously a huge social problem because when you can't hear, everybody else gets affected. They get irritated. It affects the whole family. So these are good uh, treatments that are coming up, but we still have a way to go. Stay away from the noise. That's the bottom line, which is exactly what you're doing. Check your hearing at least once a year with your doctor. Quickly, they're telling us rep, but you see these commercials for the, the vitamins and things over the counter for tinnitus and stuff. Does that work? No, no. None of them that works. And in addition to what uh, David is saying about staying away from the loud noise, huge point, especially with those headphones. Be, be prepared if you're a baby boomer. This may happen to you. I mean, we can't prevent that hearing loss just from living longer. Mm -hmm. Let me just also say that some of these surgeries works well, and I never really uh, promote anybody, but my own brother is an ENT surgeon and does a lot of these cochlear implants for kids, and they have like really good results. When everything else fails, surgery is, is a great option for some of these I, children. I hear he's a big supporter of your campaign. Yes, I'm working on well, this. Which campaign, campaign is that? <laughs> well, they should go to Facebook. Go to Dr. David Somali, Facebook. We're going to announce to run for president. Oh, boy. Right. Here we go.